Good morning. Looks like quite the mess, does it not? That is actually the current situation of our home. It's a wreck. A lot of people might be wondering, Damn, Watchman, did an earthquake hit? Damn, Watchman, did a tornado hit? No, what hit was motivation. I am going to compare what I'm doing there with our preparedness items with life. Sometimes, when things happen, big, big messes are created. And in order to clean up your life or clean up your preparedness supplies, you have to go through and you have to pick through absolutely everything that is there. And then you have to identify the good, you have to identify the bad, and after you've got that separated, like wheat and tares, you obviously get rid of the bad, keep the good, but you try to reorganize the good so that it makes more sense, or so that it's more accessible, or so you know where things are. Sometimes, just like the middle picture there, you have to label things. I am in the process of doing this with our preparedness stuff. And yeah, our home's a wreck right now. But there's, there's, there's magic going on right now. I am, I am getting more organized, especially along the lines of preparedness, than what I have ever been. But in order for me to get to that point, I have to wade through a lot of messy stuff. The same is very, very true for life, especially when dealing with um, mental, emotional issues. I've been dealing with quite a few, and every year it seems like my my depression, my Anxiety, even anger, gets a little more and more, especially around the holiday time. Now, I don't celebrate Christmas, but much of the world clearly does, and it's kind of hard not to think about things like, oh, children you haven't seen for 10 years. Now, I do my best, I do my best to warn people when I need space so that I can throw everything out on the living room floor, in this instance, my brain, so that I can pick through it and identify the good and the bad, try to make sense of it the best I can, and then try to, when I'm finished, neatly stack what remains so that I can more easily access it. And yes, I'm talking about my mind. There's obviously somebody that is extremely butthurt that I did not get back in contact with them on Christmas. Forget the notion that I don't celebrate Christmas. Forget the notion that by telling me Merry Christmas, you're kind of pissing in God's face. Forget all that. Because it's all about them. Right? Right. I am unapologetic for having to do what I needed to do in order to get my head back straight. I have made it clear a number of times, not just in general to everybody, but, you know, just in conversation. But to people that I know a little bit closer, I let them know I don't like texting back and forth. And I don't, I mean any type of text, whether it be Facebook messages, actual SMS, tech, you know, text messages, I, emails. I hate typing. And the last thing that you want to do, especially with me, if somebody tells you not to do something, 
You don't beat down the door to see how quick you can do it. And I make a, a mental note every time somebody purposely goes against what I've asked them. I make a mental note of it. And people only get so many strikes before they're kicked to the curb in my life. I used to be an extremely toxic person. Extremely. So I know what it looks like. I've made comments, uh, many comments of being able to call out pinball preparedness. Why? Because I used to be that guy like him. Really close, as a matter of fact. I mean really close. So I know it. I know the game. I've been a player. I know what emotional blackmail looks like. I know what narcissism looks like. I have dealt with shitty people my entire life. I was raised by shitty people. I have managed throughout my 51 years on this ball of dirt to attract a lot of partners that were shitty people. I'm a magnet for it. One of the things that I have done to improve my life is when I identify a shitty person, I will, depending on how toxic they are, I will immediately kick them to the curb or I'll just take mental notes and whenever it reaches a point to where something's got to be done, they get kicked to the curb. It is what it is. I had said in a previous video that somebody is going through their multiple accounts and thumb, thumbs downing. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. And I, uh, <laughs> I mentioned during that video that I had only returned a reply on Facebook on Christmas to two people. One of them is my brother. Like, real life, my brother. And do you know what it was? I responded with a meme. And the letters, LOL. In response to the meme that he had sent me. That's it. The other individual was a, a man named Doug. Douglas is, I get what he goes by on Facebook. And he's actually the man manager of a, uh, well, not here in town, but uh, about 30 minute drive away. There's a rent one, and uh, he's manager of that rent one. Now, we don't, you know, we don't do the rent own stuff. That, uh, that is just as nonsensical to us as a credit card. Uh, however, doesn't mean that other people don't. Doesn't mean that other people shouldn't have the opportunity to use those kind of services because some people just have no choice. I am blessed with the ability to fix a lot of stuff. So, just as an example, if our dryer goes out, I mean we rent, so if our dryer goes out, uh, chances are I'm calling the landlord unless it's something that I can fix. If it's something I can fix, I'll never bother the landlord. I'll fix it, and everything's good. If it's something that's going to require parts or a little more into it than that, then yeah, I'll call the landlord. But let's skip that for a second, and let's say it was my puppy, my, my problem. I know how to fix that dryer. And I'm just using dryer as an example. I know how to fix that dryer. So as long as I got the parts, the tools, it's going to get done. But that's me. That's not the majority. A lot of people out there would have to do one of two things. Either go to a rent-to-own type of place, um, 
if they don't have credit to be able to use a credit card, you know the drill. Or find something used somewhere that they can get relatively cheap. Now that's my vote. That's me. Be damned if I'm paying the prices for the <laughs> new washer and dryer that they want, especially to have such crappy uh, results. There are a lot of people that complain that the new new washers don't just don't do the job, and they don't. But let's not get off on that sidetrack. So that's what I have had to do, and and those are the only two people that I responded to, and the only reason that I responded to Doug is because I didn't want him to think that there was any kind of a riff for anything like that. The only way that I know Doug is because he is a member of our local town group that we started a couple of years ago. Um, and right out of the gate, uh, I, um, me and him kind of butted heads a little bit uh, because he kept posting and kept posting Rent One stuff. And I'm like, uh, you know, from Fairview Heights, right? Which is like a 30-minute drive away. Well, what I didn't know that Douglas explained to me was that our local store that was here, there was a Rent One here, had closed. And that he's the one that took over the clientele from our store. That's all I needed to know. Okay, you're good. You're good. Because I'll be damned if I step in between his customers and himself. Not going to do it. As I've told everybody in, in the local group, if you don't like seeing Doug's Rent One post, block him. Block him. No big deal. And, um, you know, I'm not going to stop him from keeping that relationship with his customers. It's important. So I thought it was important at least that I responded back to him just so he knew that there wasn't any kind of an issue. But let's talk about the others because I had a ton of people that contacted me on Christmas. You know, the typical Merry Christmas, yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, I'm not going to sit there and message them all back and say, oh, I don't celebrate, blah, 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 because you know what? They do. They do. It's not all about me. Just like it's not all about you or you or you or you. So, as I'm sure you are aware, I've been dealing with um, not such fun issues. And this year it's gotten messier than it's ever been. And it took quite a bit to navigate through it. Somebody seems to take issue with the notion that, number one, that I run my own life. And number two, that I use the tools that it took me years to find and develop to, you know, to help keep me from going off of the deep end. Those tools include being of service to others. Now, had they used a little bit of common sense with what I said and what I was doing, they would have quickly realized that what I was doing was finding the thing that would engage my mind the most so I could distract it enough to be able to get on top of it. That wasn't good for someone. Oh no. They had to voice their displeasure and then turn around and go from different accounts so they could thumbs down the video. <laughs> Childish, man. Childish. Grow the fuck up. It would be one thing uh, and and I, I would be a little more hesitant to take that approach, to take that attitude, if I hadn't seen how they consistently shit in their own bed. What what can you say? Toxic is toxic. Maybe, maybe if you want to have a positive, good relationship with other people, you should stop being toxic. 
You should stop trying to use an emotional blackmail to make somebody feel bad about making the only choice that they have at the time. Maybe, just maybe. Let me tell you about something a little non-toxic. You see, there's a number of people. I told you there was a bunch of people on Christmas that sent me messages and I didn't respond back, which is absolutely true. There's also a relative of mine because I've just recently gotten in contact with some of my relatives from my dad's side. And one of my cousins uh, had messaged me like, I don't know if it was Christmas Eve or what, I'd, I'd have to look. And wants to have a conversation with me because he wants to learn a little bit about this side, my side of the family. Um, <laughs> oh, Lordy. Um, <laughs> I'm probably the last one to go for that, uh, go to for that, but uh, I, I will, I will absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him how I feel. What else can I do? Um, but, uh, I haven't gotten back with him, I, and I told him that, you know, hey, give me a moment, because, oh, it was Christmas Eve, because I was out, I was actually in and out, because what, what was Mike doing on Christmas Eve, you know, because we celebrate Christmas, right, right, no, we don't celebrate Christmas, not we, and so I was literally pushing the lawnmower around the yard on Christmas Eve to mulch up the leaves, that was what I did. And I, I came in, he had messaged me, and I responded back to, hey, man, right now at the moment, I am in and out, I, and I had <laughs> mulch in the leaves. I will get back with you as soon as I'm done. I've never said another word to him, which is bullshit on my part. I get that. But if I have relation, okay, if I have people that I have strong, deep connections, I mean, for a long time, strong, deep connections with that I haven't gotten back to, in which not a single damn one of them has gotten upset over it, then why would somebody think that they, they were so damn special that I should risk any progress I made on my mental health to say Merry Christmas, you know, for which I don't celebrate. Huh. Imagine that. So let me explain what a non-toxic attitude is. And there's somebody else that I haven't spoken to that I promised I would speak to over the little break here. And that was Steve. And I hadn't contacted him back. I told him, and it was right before Christmas, I told him, I said, um, <clears throat> let me kind of get stuff, you know, in a spot to where I can hold a phone in my hand for a while, and, uh, and I'll let you know. And guess what? I never let him know, because that time never came. Last night, I got an email from Steve, you know, asking, hey, you know, is it possible for us to, to talk in the next, you know, couple of days or what have you, I'm verbatim going by memory here, but uh, um, I instantly thought, oh, crap, and so I wrote him back and um, <clears throat> apologized, and I'm not going to share his entire email. I, ho I hope that he doesn't mind that I share a few paragraphs with you but let me explain to you or let me show you what a non-toxic person looks like let me show you what a actual friend looks like I said re reply and responding to my email from last night uh, thank you very much for your email I am up and have taken my medication, which should be completed a little after 10 this morning. That I probably didn't need to share, but... Said it appears around 11 today. Should be okay for me to call. Uh, thank you for explanation, which was really not necessary, but very much appreciated. That was one of the reasons I became mega dick 
in zero to 60 seconds because um, I'm not required to explain myself to anybody except God. Except God. I don't do the whole toxic narcissism bullshit. I don't. I do not. He goes on to say, and this is the last paragraph of this I, I will uh, I'll read. It says, I have mentioned to you a couple of times over the years that if I ever went full retard, it's kind of something we've gone back and forth with uh, humor, humorously, of course, uh, you would just have to know there was something wrong. It was not as if I couldn't recognize you were having some difficulties. That's well in sharing the email from Steve. That is, and he sent that this morning, 7.23 a.m. Hadn't even been, hadn't even been, well, it's been a little over half an hour since I got that email. I've said it many, many times. My primary focus here on YouTube is to do the news. That is a fact. That is my primary focus. If I make friends along the way, that's great. That's fine. But it's not a focus of mine. And this is, this is the thing that absolutely blows my mind. It doesn't take long knowing me. And, you know, a lot of times it comes up in conversation. I don't. My brother, my older brother, the only, the oldest brother, he's the only one I have anything to do with for my family. So if I have literally shoved everyone in my family out of my life with the exception of my oldest brother, if I literally have spent the last 10 years without being able to communicate and be a part of my children's lives, Part of that is I ref I will not have anything at all to do with my ex. Why? Because she's toxic. She's toxic as it gets. She will absolutely do anything and everything in her power to gain control and to wreak havoc. And the only way I know of to deal with people like that is to push them as far away as I can. I am not on this earth to play games with people. Not even a little bit. If I do something and I apologize for doing it, I mean it. But if I do something and apologize for doing it, and you come back with some kind of load of horse shit, don't expect a positive response. I'm also not a take-back person. Just not. When you've made your bed with me, that's that. You know, I, there's a saying that I've said many, many, many times. An X is an X for a reason. Plain and simple. Meaning you don't get back with your exes. Why? Pretty obvious. Should be pretty obvious. Now, there are instances to where that was fine, things worked out. Why? Because both people grew. The only time that that ever works out getting back with exes is if both people grew. It's the only way it'll work. And if somebody doesn't show any way, shape, or form that they've grown up or that they've tried to have an understanding or what have you, then you're better off without them. Just the truth. 
I have sat there and had to fight the thoughts of my children out of my head for the last ten years. Don't think for a second that there is a single person on this planet that is entitled to me. The only one that's entitled to me is God. That's it. I'll be back Sunday, just as I had mentioned. I'm probably not going to do the VR thing every night. Sunday night I won't be doing the VR thing. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'm probably going to pick one or two days a week to do the VR thing to where we can have anybody and everybody come that wants to participate. It's probably not going to be, because it's, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of extra work that goes into that. It's hot sitting in the, the headset all that time and all that. Um, and again, it's quite a bit of extra work and hassle and this and that. And is it worth it? Well, if I could pack the room or even, you know, get a a few people in there. I mean, if if I could get five, six people in there consistently, I'd do it every damn night. I do it every damn night, but it's kind of pointless uh, when when folks won't engage. And that was the whole point of me doing that, was so that others, you know, multiple others um, could engage. So that's why I'm going to cut it down to one, maybe two nights a week. It might be a little bit more encouragement and motivation for uh, people to hop in and say hi. Uh, but anyway, other than that, I, I don't know what to tell folks. I, I, you know, just just like Steve made a point of, you know, it's it's not necessary for me to explain myself. It's not. I shouldn't have to. And if I go the extra step to explain myself, it's because I don't intend to cause harm in a relationship. But when I do recognize that people could give two shits about the the havoc that they wreak, they won't be a part of my life. I'm probably going to have a lot of changes coming this year, 2024. Because there's a fair amount of bullshit that I'm done dealing with. There's going to be probably a lot of changes. Probably a lot of shocked people as well. When I ask people not to do something, you know, things that I'm within my my own rights to ask, they got two choices. They can either listen to it or not. But there's a pretty damn good chance if they choose not, their time, their clock is ticking as far as being a part of my life. Because I don't play those games. I will try to do what I can to respect the wishes of other people and I just ask the same. There is nobody that's entitled to me or you for that matter. And if my wishes, if I have stumbling blocks that I ask people not to throw in my way because of it being a stumbling block and they consistently do it. It's only a matter of time. Like I said, there's going to be some shocked people in 2024 because I've had enough. I have had enough. I hope to see you Sunday night on the live show. Going to continue on, continuing on. Because life doesn't stop. The world doesn't stop. Sometimes we got to back away from it a little bit to make sure that it doesn't stop for us personally. And that's what I had to do. And I am absolutely unapologetic and unashamed of doing so. Anybody that thinks I should be 
should probably check themselves. Shalom.